or our advertisers. With your night host of News and Views, Joel Heitkamp. Joel, after 80 days, the session finally wraps <laughs> 80 plus. <up>. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that jumps out to me, you mentioned before the session, I think it was even on the show, you said, Chris, if I'm a Democrat, after seeing the executive's budget, I basically go to Bismarck, shake everyone's hand, say, Governor, thank you very much, and leave and save the taxpayers the rest of the session money. I want to show you something to me that was shocking and disheartening. We can bring up this first graphic, please. So here you can see red is obviously the previous biennium budget. Green is the governor's budget that you said as a self-pronounced Democrat. Hey, guys, go out there, shake hands, and go home. I thought, no way, with a Republican, quote-unquote, conservative supermajority, Big deal. They're going to get two billion dollars more spending. Sixty percent increase. Sixty percent increase in state spending. How do you explain that? I I, I don't have to. I'm now I'm no longer there. But try. I mean, well, I'm struggling. He, he, the Scarpo bill had a lot to do with all of that, and that was an infrastructure needs bill out in Western North Dakota. So some of this is justified. What they did when it came to any project involving state higher education, if you wanted a building in state higher education, you were going to get it. But this I mean, Governor Dalrymple session. already threw a ton of money at higher ed. You and I talked about mm -hmm. in the past, and then to spend $2 billion more? Well, right. I mean, I I'm not going to do Al Carlson's work for Al. He's supposed to be the conservative watchdog for this. But I clearly was wrong. <laughs> if, 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 you want, if you wanted the state to actually put some of these dollars to work and get them back out there, uh, they got some of these dollars out there and, and to work. Now, we can talk about prioritization of those dollars, but certainly, and, and this again is what happens when you wait until the very end to do your work. When you wait until the very end to balance your checkbook and do your work, they let this session become a session about firing a chancellor, about abortion, and then they wait until the end to the, the meat and potato issues. And why they did that, Chris, I have yet to figure out. But now when you say they about the abortion issue, there was 33% of Democrats that voted for these bills as well. So that was a widespread no, no, I'm not, issue. I'm not saying who the they is. Okay. I'm not saying one way or another. What I'm saying is leadership. And it comes down to what we've been talking about here in the hot box for a number of weeks. Lack of leadership. Let them hijack the session to where really Betty Grandy became the poster child for the North Dakota legislature. No one in the legislature wants Betty Grandy to be your poster child. No one does. They don't want her speaking for you. Let me ask you this. $2 billion more than even the executive budget, where'd that money go? I mean, was it, was it good investments in your opinion, and, and where'd it go? Some were and some weren't. I mean, some of it is, is setting up. Um, the attorney general walked out with way more money than the previous attorney general ever would have got. I'll vouch for you on that one. <laughs> I mean, this attorney general, whatever he wants, he gets, and he doesn't have to come down and really make the argument for. Uh, he got 400 k plugged in on the very last day for fighting the lawsuits we were just talking about. So money really wasn't the issue. Uh, these guys were a dad after he just sold the prize hog at the county fair. Every kid went, came home with new shoes. But that's not true, because let me share this with you, which actually shocked me again as well. When, earlier this morning, you had North Dakota House Majority Leader Al Carlson on your radio show, yep. one of the first things that came out of his mouth was, Joel, you know, the real winners in this session, the people of North Dakota, of course. Well, let's look at this from an objective point of view for a moment. Let's bring these graphics up. Here are some of the state's, quote unquote, what I call savings accounts, budget stabilization fund, property tax relief fund. Then these other two, they didn't even add in the governor's wow. analysis, the legacy fund, schools, land, and trust fund. You add all these funds up, we come up with a total in the state savings accounts of over $5 billion. If you can bring that next graphic up, please. $5.75 billion. So that's in the state savings account. But remember, the real winners here, Joel, were the people of North Dakota. Let's bring up this next graphic, please. State savings account versus the people's total tax relief. I, I don't consider that to be a win in any way, shape, or form. For the people is what you're getting is at. what I'm getting and, at. And, and here's the other side to that. Who was providing the leadership that said how that was going to be spent in the end? I mean, who? I mean, would you, would you let me throw one at you. Do you think Governor Dalrymple for, provided leadership this session? He said this is the best session in the history of the state. <laughs> of course he's going to say that. The spin is out. I mean, can we be honest? The spin is out big time. Here, here's the other part that, that doesn't come into your equation. A year from now, when the budget forecasts come in and they see where the revenues are, and Pam Sharp has dramatically undercut what the revenues are coming in to the state again, 
those numbers are going to even look uh, like there's a bigger gap between Oh, and the two. four years from now, the Legacy Fund is going to have $3 billion yeah. in it. How can these guys be so tone deaf? Their goal going into the session was a billion dollars in tax relief. They didn't even reach that goal. And not only that, but then they ended up having a debate on the last day about how they can tell townships, school boards, counties exactly how to do their job. And I don't get that. I mean, these people that are so f for local control were trying to tell these people how to do their job when they weren't, as you just pointed out, putting the money back to them. Speaking of that, where they're now we're going to say, hey, let's have the state run basically education. The only thing that upsets me, before the session, you and I had this conversation. I said, look, here's what they're going to do. I just know they are. They're conservatives. They're going to do the right thing. <laughs> they're going to change the oil extraction tax so more money now goes back to the counties, back to the local political townships. This state, I, I don't know if I equate it to D.C. at this point or what, but it's become more and more centralized. We know best. You guys just be quiet. We'll handle this for you. It's wrong. Why didn't they change that equation? Well, they didn't change the equation. Well, the Scarpo bill got money back out to people. But but, but it's from the state. I know. It's not to the Again, locals. Again, it isn't to the locals. I, I get all of that. And if you're the oil counties that put all that money into the study that actually was funded, remember when Senator Hovind came out and they had the big hey, we got this funding on how much money the oil counties should need. What happened to that? What happened to their vision 2020 or 30 or whatever? They got rolled. They got absolutely rolled. If they didn't have the Bob Scarpo bill, they went to got anything, and they had to kick, drag, and scream for that. Well, they got $2.3 billion, so that is a big chunk No, of no, change. but what I'm talking about is if it wasn't for that bill, there wouldn't have been money directed directly to they would have been at the whim of the state. It went to went to local fire districts, local uh, ambulances, local schools, those type of issues. Uh, and if you're if you're a school, if you're edgely calm and your enrollment is declining, take a serious look at what this funding formula now does for them, because it's strictly based on per pupil, and they can't go back to property taxes the way they should if they have to. Speaking of funding formulas, there's a couple of things I want to get to, but I want to move on to higher ed. Big meeting coming up this Thursday. Uh, Where's it going to be? It's going to be in Grand Forks. In the public? <laughs> <laughs> Where's it going to be? I think it's going to be underground. Okay, just check. They're going to be throwing some just dice check. around. And okay, just check. <laughs> Here's my thing. When you talk about the funding formula, now they're changing the funding formula for universities, so it's going to be based on completed credit hours. Can you say grade inflation? I mean, <laughs> yeah. is that going to happen or not? Yeah. Well, it is going to happen. And that's been Ham Shivani's argument, I think, all along. Here's the thing that you and I had the debate right here before about if Ham Shivani survived the session, does he survive? And I think the answer is yes. So you think after this Thursday meeting, he's going to walk out and go, all right, here we go. I won. You lost. You tried to get me fired. You didn't even fund an exit plan for me. If I'm Ham Shivani, I already got these board members, right? You're not going to vote on it until 2014, whether you completely restructure. And North Dakotans aren't going to vote to give the governor that much power over higher ed. And so if you're Ham Shivani, you're like, Time to buy a new Porsche, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, quickly now, we've got a couple minutes left. Biggest accomplishment and biggest disappointment this session. Biggest accomplishment in your eyes is? I think the biggest accomplishment was, in the end, they did do something on animal cruelty that had a level of common sense to it, something I would have voted for that didn't go too far. Uh, I think that there is some property tax relief in there, but not nearly enough for what they could have done. That's still a question mark. Biggest disappointment to me was, they did not focus monetarily this session on the big issues of today. What they did was they turned it into a, a session about social engineering, which, fine, you're going to have those fringe debates, but they didn't deal with a game plan for the future of the state of North Dakota long term. And they can spin all they want, Chris, but North Dakotans got that. They had such an incredible opportunity. The biggest disappointment for me is I looked at going to the session, I thought, you know what, we are going to be able to lead the nation coming out of here. 49 states are going to look at North Dakota and go, they just nailed it. We need to follow. And I thought for sure, I was hoping there was some sort of game plan with all the social issues and the pro-life bills that now we've got the national spotlight. Now let's go and shout out how to run things fiscally. And it never happened. We had the perfect opportunity to say, look, we got the spotlight now. Now let's go show true tax relief, show yeah. these guys how to run a state fiscally. Let's take advantage of the spotlight. It, we we no one, no one's, no one's going to look at North Dakota like <laughs> the Alaska plan. No one's going to do that. The other thing is there's a way they govern during the interim. you got to keep your eye on. And Al Carlson has one more vote than the Senate has for that leadership of legislative management. He lost. 
He what lost. Do you mean? Ray Holmberg, a state senator from Grand Forks, chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee, is during the interim the head of legislative management, which really puts him as the head of the legislature. And so for Al Carlson to say, hey, everybody's loving me, it's all in the end product, kumbaya, let's high five. I don't think Danny Walker's having him over for steaks. I really don't believe it. Probably the steak and lobster. Yeah. <laughs> be, be sure and stay with us. Uh, we're gonna get to your comments, your thoughts, and hey, grade this session. Did they take care of the people? Again, North Dakota House Majority or Al Carlson saying the real winners were the people. Do you feel that way at home? Be sure and uh, stay with us as well. Big event coming up tomorrow. Legislative wrap up. We'll tell you who's there and how you can join us right here in Fargo. And as always, be sure and join our conversation. Go to the website 630pov.com. We'll be right back.